There he How is. How are we doing today, Tommy? I'm in a good mood. How are you doing, buddy? I'm in a great mood as well. Um, you know, coming back from the holiday week last week, I feel like there was an extension of that holiday trade to start the week. It was just kind of like watching paint dry in some of these markets, but starting to see a little bit of movement, which is certainly nice to see uh, with one more day until the weekend. And I think a lot of today's optimism, you know, started with that export report. Corn, that came in above the top end of expectations. And the corn demand really has been stout for some time. So that's adding uh, some momentum to the trade, certainly. And then beans, as you had mentioned, you know, still mostly range bound call it 995 to 975 in that january contract and we're just kind of waiting for a catalyst to give us new direction and some of these markets potentially that comes in the way of, of next tuesday's usda report but hey anytime you can get green and uh, corn beans and wheat in the same day as of late i'll, I'll take it ring the bell i wish i had a bell here uh, but we're <laughs> ringing it in our head Speaking of getting bells rung, it's been a tough year. I mean, we have growers. We're advising people. I know I am. They're like, I don't want to sell my grain. It's below my cost production. Does the Chicago Board of Trade care what anyone's cost production is? No, absolutely not. Uh, the, you know, the, this is a marketplace. It's a global marketplace, and there's a lot of different players with different objectives in the market. Uh, you know, right now we're looking at the grains into the end of the year, halfway optimistic uh, with the lens. I think there is some upside potential. I think crop conditions in South America, I think you could make the case that it's being priced to perfection, not to say that it can't live up to those expectations, but it doesn't seem like there's any real premium for any concerns down there. And looking at kind of the intermediate term uh, forecast two to four weeks out, it looks like we could start to see things dry up. Potentially that puts a little bit more fuel in this market. But again, it, it's been mostly range bound. We just need to get out above some of these technical levels, technical resistance levels, get people excited about the markets again. Uh, and hopefully that can carry over into a strong start to the year. You stay right there. We're going to carry over and come back and talk about cattle here on Market Day Report. Oliver Slope, live from Chicago on Market Day Report. See you in just a minute. 10. Oliver, talk meats. It's the exciting part of what I've traded and what I've helped people hedge today. What do you see out there, my friend? Well, you'd mentioned markets go up, markets go down, and I think uh, the recent pullback we've seen here in the cattle complex is welcomed. I think we started to forget that the market can go down. Uh, looking at the fund positioning, that's been something really at the top of our radar for livestock as a whole. And when you combine the net long position and fund funds for live cattle, feeder cattle, and lean hogs, it is a record net long position. So a lot of people are already on the same side of the boat. And I think what we're seeing today is maybe some long liquidation and some profit taking here as we look towards the end of the year. And potentially that, that feeds on itself, regardless of the fundamental landscape. Remember, this is a futures market. I think there's been a lot of optimism built in, uh, and rightfully so. The fundamental landscape has been and been pretty stout, but I think it's time to, to maybe settle back into a little bit more of a range. And I think that's part of the reason why we're seeing some pressure. I don't know that we're going to see the steep and dramatic sell-offs like we've seen in the past, uh, but certainly I think there is more downside risk here. And what are you telling people? Get hedged up. You're selling futures. You're buying puts. You're selling calls. Give us the easy solution. Futures and oh, options man, have risk. Oh, man, to put a blanket disclosure. recommendation out on TV, that's a tough one for the regulators to wrestle with. Uh, I, I like using options, a combination of futures and options. It just kind of de depends on the individual's risk tolerance and what their objectives are in the market. We're, we're here to help with that, so we're always available. Good answer. Oliver Slope coming to you from Chicago. I wish you a Merry Christmas. I don't know if I'll see you. Uh, but you always answer the question so well. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you, too. Pleasure talking to you again, Tommy. Thank you, buddy. Suzanne, so, what do you think of that guy? He's awesome. He's good. Great information. And again, uh, at this time of year, you know, we're talking about what everything kind of 